attention with me to John chapter 10. John chapter 10, we'll be reading verses 1 through 10. Hear the word of the Lord. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. Word of God for the people of God. How many of you played follow the leader growing up? Yeah? Was it fun? Sometimes? <laughs> Why was it not fun sometimes? Depending on who was the leader, right? If the teacher was watching, it was probably okay. And that how it goes? Someone to keep things in line, someone to kind of Hem things in on the edges so that somebody didn't get too carried away and try to get us into trouble or into compromising situations. I know that among my friends, we knew who the problem leaders would be. You probably did too. We knew who those that we could trust would be, and we knew who we could not trust. And if they became leader, the game probably dissolved rather quickly. Because we knew their character. We knew who they were. We knew their purposes, their objectives. When Jesus talks here about being the shepherd of the sheep, he talks about our knowing his voice. And it's more than simply recognizing one's voice. I could come up here and talk like Bugs Bunny, and I wouldn't be Bugs Bunny, right? But you can also pick out my voice in a crowd if you know me well enough. And my voice points you to me. And when you do that, you're pointing at what you know of my character of what I am about, of what my purposes in life are. So Jesus says that as we know his voice, as we know his character, we find a different way forward. I had a parishioner from Peru who told me about one time when some of their sheep were stolen, and so they took the shepherd of the sheep and put her in the back of the truck and drove down the highway where there were fields and fields and fields of sheep. And she would call out, and the sheep would ignore her until she came upon some of her own sheep that had been stolen, and they came running. That was the only proof they needed that these were their sheep that had been stolen. Because the sheep will follow the voice of the shepherd that they know, the one they have come to trust. 
They know that they are safe with this one, that this shepherd will lead them to water, to grass, to safety, to care. That's what Jesus is talking about here. It's our knowing the very character of God that he expressed so that we might follow his voice calling us and know the difference between his voice and any other. The other who have come before, he says, are thieves, robbers. They come to maim, to destroy, to kill. Their purposes, their intention is very different. And we can make that distinction, can't we? We can see the difference. But that's not always easy for us. Even when we do notice the difference. Sheep will follow the shepherd and there's basically no getting around it. The shepherd might not be the best one to lead and guard and guide and protect those sheep. But because that is the voice they know, they will follow. I could abuse my dog, but he will still hear my voice and come running when he hears it, won't he? Doesn't matter how well or how poorly I treat him, I am part of his pack. I am the leader, and he is going to come along beside me and protect me because I belong to his pack, and he belongs to me. There's very little choice in that matter. So often, like sheep and like dogs, we can become immersed in social organizations, in families, in structures, in any kind of group that might turn toxic on us. And it's difficult for us to break away. We have opportunity, but like unto sheep and dogs, it becomes difficult for us to break away because the structure that we know, whether it be a family, whether it be an organization, a club, a political party, a group of alumni from a school, a group of classmates with whom we spent many years, whatever the group happens to be, we find our identity bound up with that group. And as toxic as it may become, it may become very difficult for us to break away, to find a new place without the toxicity because we depend upon that social group, don't we? It could be a job. Could be a group of friends, family, co workers. And it matters what the character of that group is. Because that group's character determines their actions and how they impact our lives. Jesus tells us that there were many who claimed the name of God, and yet we're not following after the character of Yahweh. They were using the claim of being one worthy of being followed, and yet they were after different purposes in life. <clears throat> they were seeking after power, importance, wealth, respect, control. It's difficult for us sometimes to 
be able to recognize it, but more than recognize it, to say it is time to break away. And yet, we can easily see that reality in the lives of others, can't we? I can readily point out a woman who needs to escape an abusive relationship at home. We have laws that help us determine when children are being abused and need to be taken away from their parents. We can recognize the lives of friends and loved ones who were trapped in bad relationships, who were ensnared by addictions, who were in poor job situations and need release and need freedom, need a new way forward. And yet it is difficult to break away. Because no matter what the structure is, the more we are tied into it, the more we gain our support and confidence from knowing our place in the world through that affinity group. Striking out on our own is a scary enterprise. How will I feed myself? Where will I live? Who will I go to for support? How will I find a way forward? And is there anyone out there on whom I can actually depend? Because I am told that this group is my lot in life. one thing to witness how others are ensnared. It's another thing to understand how they are ensnared. But it's completely different when it comes to ourselves. Because to recognize that I might need to break away from a toxic situation or setting or way of doing and being requires taking a leap of faith, of stepping out and finding new relationships. We often have too much tied up in our leadership structures that are established for us. We know our place within them. We see this in all sorts of places in the world around us. Recognizing that one needs a different direction is a scary prospect. Accepting that leaders do not have our best interests at heart can raise all sorts of issues. Jesus calls us to look to the character of those we would follow. What is their motivation? What are their objectives? What are their goals? How do they measure up to where and how Jesus himself would lead us? Is abundant living where they are taking us? All of us? Too often we may think that all we need to do is swap out the individual at the head of a family or an institution, an organization. What we need to do is to look deeper into the character, values, and goals of the structure in question. I don't know how many of you have been following along with Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools. Is this the fourth or the fifth time they have had a superintendent of schools in the last 10 years? You can't tell me that the problem is the person they're putting in charge. There's something else going on behind the scenes that's not being addressed. 
Isn't that how we so often function? We think we can swap out one personality for another, but often we need to address things that are much deeper about how the system is organized, what its purposes really are, who is it working for? read something from a pastor this week. He said, whatever your church organization is designed to do, that is exactly what it is resulting in. Problem is that we don't always understand why we are organized the way we are. But whatever the results happen to be, that is in large part because of how we are structuring ourselves, how we are relating and what we are doing. Because that leads to inevitable results so often. Sometimes we need a course correction. Sometimes we need to shift gears and adopt a new reality or a new understanding of ourselves, of life, of our structures. Sometimes that is insufficient. When what makes it toxic remains unaddressed, who is in charge doesn't really matter. Swapping out one leader for another of the same mold is pretty much pointless. Needed change must begin at the level of values, priorities, character. Jesus says we need to know the character of his voice. We need to know that that is the character after which we are seeking, the character that we are following. That is the one who leads us to God. To the things of God, to abundant life for ourselves and for others. We know all too well that professing to speak for God is not enough. What does the character of one's life say? That is a much better determination for whether we are actually following the right people in life. Does their character point us to that of Christ? It's a high bar that is set before us. It is, however, the minimum that we should be seeking. Those we would embrace as leaders should evidence God's love and grace ahead of anything else. If they're not leading us into the abundant life Jesus referenced, they're not worthy of their claims of following Christ. The only real way to make that distinction begins with knowing the voice of Jesus. Are we close enough to the model set before us that others can see Jesus clearly in our lives? Are we worthy of being followed? Are we worthy examples of ones who are following after Christ Jesus in all things? If not, we might need a course correction a shift in purpose. I am the good shepherd, Jesus says. I am the gate for the sheep. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundant.
you join me in our closing